I wanted to briefly cover the evolution of Wi-Fi calling because it's been around for a lot longer than you would suspect. In 2003, Skype uh, developed the first voice over the internet service uh, of carrier quality. Uh, the following year, T-Mobile used its acquisition of a hotspot provider and developed what is called unlicensed mobile access, better known net today as Wi-Fi calling. However, it was hardly used because the Wi-Fi back in, in that period of time was not uh, of very high quality. In 2008, 2007, Apple released the first iPhone, and that began a revolution. In 2009, the lead standards were set by the apartment community, and that created uh, a, a set of uh, construction uh, criteria that reduce the ability of cell carriers to penetrate buildings. Smartphones began to proliferate in 2010 and uh, by 2012 they became so popular that special, young people especially were using them almost for every type of communication. Thus, DAS systems uh, DAS systems became um, more popular, especially for heavily uh, used areas like arenas and stadiums, um, because the smartphones were create were creating huge capacity problems for the cell carrier. We announced Telboost in 2012 um, as a cost-efficient way uh, to provide in-building cellular services uh, by boosting the signal and it became very popular. And then, of course, in 2013, the FCC released its, its rules on boosters, which changed things considerably, and today we have to operate under those rules. There were three announcements made in 2014. Uh, uh, earlier um, in 2014, Sprint announced support for Wi-Fi calling. In June, Apple announced uh, support for Wi-Fi calling in its iOS 8 software platform, which will handle all iPhones and iPads. And uh, immediately thereafter, T-Mobile announced support for uh, Wi-Fi calling um, for the iPhone, at which, and it already had support for Android. And then in August, Smith Micro made an announcement on a deal with Verizon and I think that, that Tom will go into that in a little bit more detail later. The most important thing to recognize is the popularity of Wi-Fi calling. Today, over one billion users worldwide use native calling and over-the-top calling using Wi-Fi. To show how Wi-Fi calling works, along with some of the over-the-top applications, I'm going to hand the microphone to Tom. Thank you, Richard. Uh, we wanted to go through essentially what the difference is between the two methodologies you, we've already talked about. One, the first one is the over-the-top approach. Uh, you're probably already familiar with this, but just to step back and, and set, the, set the ground for, for the discussions going forward. Over-the-top applications are applications that provide a service that bypasses the traditional distribution and, and billing models of the carriers or ISP. So in the case of telephony apps like this, an OTT app allows for voice text and data transmission via either a smartphone, a tablet, or a computer uh, over Wi-Fi instead of the 3G, 4G cellular network. This allows users to perform actions that circumvent traditional billing from the cellular carriers or the telcos. So you're probably very familiar with some of the over-the-air, over the over-the-top apps that are out there uh, from a voice telephony perspective. The biggest one is Skype. I believe there's about 650 million Skype users worldwide. But for those of you with an Apple iPhone, you've got FaceTime, there's Viber, there's Vonage, there's Tango. There's probably hundreds of so-called over-the-top applications. Uh, on the video on demand side, we're all familiar with things like Netflix and Hulu. So that has been the traditional way people historically have made uh, phone calls over Wi-Fi with those types of apps. And there's some advantages and disadvantages. On the advantage side, clearly allows users to make voice calls, text, video messages over Wi-Fi when there is no indoor cellular signal. 
A lot of these applications are free or they have kind of a freemium, premium service uh, that allows you to make voice and uh, text calls at little or no cost. Some users actually prefer the functionality of these apps uh, and the calling interface of these apps over their over the dialer of their phone. So a lot of people like, frankly, like the the Skype video calling feature, for example. The disadvantages: they all require you to download an application. So these typically don't come native with your phone or your tablet or your computer, but you need to download them. The the app services they provide vary depending on the app. Some are voice only. Some are SMS text only. Some are chat messaging only, like uh, WhatsApp. Uh, if, as a user, you need to kind of download this, figure out if it's going to work for you. Uh, sometimes you, you use one, you don't like it, you pay for it, you stop using it. There's all kinds of people that have downloaded Skype that probably don't use it that often. It, it obviously is not seamless to device. It requires you to open an app. You're typically using the dialer uh, on, the, on the app. Um, it does not offer seamless roaming between the cellular network and Wi-Fi. Uh, and typically, Wi-Fi calling apps require you to use a number other than your mobile phone number. So if you're a Skype user and you want to get phone calls, for example, you need to have a separate Skype phone number that's distinct from your uh, cell phone number. Uh, Wi-Fi calling. What we're talking about uh, today really goes beyond the over-the-top approach, and we're talking about what we call seamless Wi-Fi calling. And from our perspective, once this becomes ubiquitous, you're going to start to to not see a need for some of the other technologies like DAS that Dick had previously mentioned. So, so what is seamless Wi-Fi calling? It's calling that looks like, for Wi-Fi, looks just like you make a phone call over the cellular network. So when a user goes to make a call on their smartphone, they're clicking on the same calling icon that they would use to call over cellular. Um, and it looks just like, so the dialer that you use on Wi-Fi just looks like, looks like the dialer you're using over cellular. The other issue you get, obviously, is you get seamless roaming in between your Wi-Fi network and the cellular network. So this obviously re uh, results in, in, in the necessity for the carrier, if you will, to support Wi-Fi calling. But it does solve the indoor coverage problem, and it solves it at a price point that is 50% uh, to 20% of what a typical DAS would cost. So what are the advantages, obviously? The advantages for most of us are you don't need a second phone number. Uh, you don't need to learn a different application. There's no difference to the user. It's fully transparent. Users can make calls, and the phone determines whether it uses Wi-Fi or cellular, uh, depending on what's available. And it can seamlessly roam between both of those. For international travelers, uh, for those of you who are, are overseas and have to get a, a cell phone with a different SIM card, <coughs> you can now use Wi-Fi calling back to the U.S. From, from some of these carriers without, without paying any extra charges. So if you're going overseas, there's no reason to kind of download an app. There's no reason to get a different SIM card. You take your phone and it works wherever you are in the world, wherever there is a, a Wi-Fi network. What's the big disadvantage? The big dis disadvantage, unfortunately, is seamless Wi-Fi calling today is not yet supported by all of the major carriers. And we'll go into that in a little, in a little, uh, a little later. 